take one. Yeah. I messed up the line on the point. Um, I think it wants to be more in control on your end because okay. it's still. Um, my name is Serini. I am an actress, playwright, and director. I tend to create original um, theatre pieces, but I sometimes um, direct other people's work or create adaptations. So tell us a little bit about your process. Do you have any favourite locations to work and that kind of thing? Okay, so um, for my process, so I tend to, I have a little studio where I work from. Um, it's just a small room with like a nice window in the front. Um, I tend to light a candle actually. Uh, maybe some incense, a bit of a hippie in that way. Um, but I just find it helps me to get into the creative and also just practical mindset that you need to be in. Um, so for Hamlet, what I did was I read the play, researched it like mad, kind of found little dots of information in the piece. And I realized that um, the, the line that stood out to me is, we are arrant knaves all, believe none of us. And I thought that was really interesting. So I decided I wanted to kind of explore that theme of Shakespeare's Hamlet, more to do with the appearance and reality and what lies are being told, especially in the character of Claudius. So that's kind of where my process began. And then I decided I would like to set it in a circus based on that reason, because I realized every character in the show plays a role that could be applied to a circus, which again makes it more interesting for young people. And then after that, I suppose, I did auditions here. Um, I found people I liked, then I did a workshop to see how the chemistry worked between them. And then once we got everyone together, the cast was announced or whatever, we began blocking organically, working with um, not just my instincts, but the instincts of the actors and what felt right to them. Oh, no, come and sit you down and shut my foot until I set the glass where she may see the Do you have any muses or idols or that kind of thing? Yeah, so as much as I admire, um, I suppose, well-respected actors, writers, whatever, I also would find muses in everyday people. So it might be a conversation you hear on the bus or it might be something you read in a newspaper or a documentary you see on YouTube. I just think some of the most interesting people are ones that you wouldn't expect. And so as a writer, a lot of the time it's based on maybe somebody I've known. Um, and as an actor, again, observing people or experiencing things yourself is the best way to emulate an emotion or a time or place. Um, and I like to bring that through when I'm directing as well. I to go from yeah, that I think you that. brought that energy yeah. into this. Yeah. What did you think? That's, yeah, it was... It felt a little more like you and then... Yeah, it was me. sort of like the way we were doing it was sort of like... Um, you know, the prey slash, like, predator or whatever, you know. Yeah, but I don't want to be seeing really... more sexiness as well. Yeah, there but was a little sexy. We did it before, sexy. remember we did, like, you did, like, the like you get all the kind of girls oh, and, like, you, kiss you, me. You. Has your student life or studies at UCD helped your craft? Well, absolutely. I mean, obviously I studied English and drama, which kind of introduced me to a load of theory um, and different books and plays that I would never have known about otherwise. But I have to say the biggest thing that really shaped me as an artist was being part of Dramsock. Um, I was on the committee in my second year as the visual design artist. But other than that, I auditioned for loads of things I didn't get. I um, directed, I wrote, I did assistant directing, um, I postered at 6 a.m. Like literally it showed me how to be not just an actor, but to be an all round um, to have a working theatre company and it was it was in my years of UCD that I formed my company Lip Sync Theatre and I have to say when I um, I then did a master's in Spain at the Institute of the Arts Barcelona and they had just come from acting backgrounds they'd never done any anything like that and they really struggled with the idea of kind of postering or light, lighting text all that kind of stuff which was so 
like not new to me at all it was something I'd always grown up with from drum sock so it, it just helped me to understand the, the the hard work that's involved um and also amazing friends as well yeah the community came yeah, naturally community. to you yeah I have heard of your paintings too. What? God gives you one face and you make yourselves another. You jig, you animal, and you list, and you nickname God's creatures and make your want of this, your ignorance. Uh, hi, I'm Ryan Harron and I'm playing uh, Hamlet in Hamlet <laughs> here in UCD. Um, I pretty much just love the play. It's my favourite Shakespearean play and I auditioned, I got the role. Um, it's been a fabulous couple of months so far. Uh, Zerini's incredible to work with. Um, she's really open and she works a lot with you in particular in difficult scenes when you need some help. She's very open and she has a lot of uh, knowledge surrounding different stuff with Shakespeare. So I, I love it. Hi, I'm Nessa Malumbi and I'm playing Gertrude. Gertrude in this show is a showgirl because this adaptation of Hamlet is set in the circus. It really brings a whole new energy to the show and something that's never really been done before. Hello, I'm Max Kofinan and I'm playing Polonius in this year's production of Hamlet. Uh, I uh, have been in the Shakespeare show before and I went for it again this year, uh, hoping to get it and I was lucky enough to get into this fantastic production. Uh, this year I'm a clown, uh, which is great fun. Um, and I, I can't really praise this, uh, this show enough. It's such a brilliant experience to be involved. Zerini is an incredible director and her vision for the show is so interesting and so original that it's really just been a joy to be in rehearsals. You are my mother! Nay, then I'll send those to you that can't. Oh no, sit you down, you shall not budge until I set up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. Do you have any highlight in your career or achievements that you've done so far that really stand out? Yeah, um, so I suppose my biggest highlight so far is um, when I did my show Dolly at the Edinburgh Fringe 2018 um, because that was I suppose the biggest challenge not only um, creatively but in terms of bringing nine people to Edinburgh, um, flyering on the streets in the rain, trying to get people to come into the show. Um, it really opened my eyes to, it kind of made me feel like a really little old fish in a big pond. Because um, before my kind of world was UCD and drum sock. And, um, I mean, I'd done a few small fringes in Ireland, like Galway Fringe, and I'd done the Scene and Heard Festival. But apart from that, like Edinburgh was a massive, massive step up, just in scale. Um, and I just had an incredible time. Like we were just really lucky that everyone in the cast and crew were really, really sound and really, really talented. So um, it was just a, a big kind of experience. I got to see incredible stuff as well, like amazing shows. I also saw some terrible shows and it taught me a lot about how important marketing is and about venues and pushing yourself. And because some of the best things I saw had like three or four people in the audience and some of the worst things were sold out. So it kind of opened my eyes that it's not just about being really good. It's about how, like, everything, you know. So I suppose that would be my biggest thing so far. Any plans to go back? Yes, this year I do plan to go back. Um, I have a new show called um, The Stargazer Eats Locust. Um, working with some of the, the same people who were in Dolly. Um, we plan to do a longer run this time in Edinburgh and in a different venue. So fingers crossed, lots of organising to be done <laughs> in advance. Yeah. That's exciting. And last question, where do you see yourself in five years and ten years? Okay, so I suppose for me I just want to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, I'd love to do um, film work. I haven't really done any so far. That's what I'd love to get into, um, film acting, but also maybe directing little films. I think I'd really, really enjoy that. Um, ten years, yeah, I'd love to just do my, sh my work more internationally. 
So not just Ireland in the UK, but I'd love to bring work to America, to Australia. Um, and I suppose just, yeah, hopefully like be more settled in my like, personal life as well. Like have somewhere to live, all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah that's important too, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> People forget those things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very, very much for Thank your time. You. Thank you so much. This is called Queen of There's someone pissing over the pier This isn't how I envision summer The hottest day of the year Yet it still feels like Dante's Inferno can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, my name is Bronte. I'm a songwriter for Dublin. And I've been writing songs since I've been about maybe 14 or 15, but it's been really the last year that I've really started performing and getting out there. Uh, what's your current project? My current project? Well, my current project would be ideally, I'm writing loads of songs at the moment, maybe to release a single or an EP, but I really just want to release something, so I'm just writing a lot at the minute and trying to compile a complete set, really, to release. Can you tell us a bit about your process? Do you have any favourite locations to write your songs? Um, I guess I'm like a lot of writers that I, I, I read. Uh, I don't really like writing in public. I get ideas in public, but I think I need a really quiet place, like a room of my own, really, to process what I've been inspired by and write everything down. I, I do like the countryside a lot. I've fallen in love with Wicklow and Bray, and those are sort of places I feel inspired by, but... Quiet room, it seems to be fun. What are your muses or idols or a favourite pose or piece of work that inspire you? Mm, I love Elliot Smith's. He, he, I think he'll always be my favourite musician, from his great chord progressions to lyrics. He's just a fantastic musician, always. It never fails to move me. But I'm reading a book called Big Magic at the minute by, I believe, Elizabeth Gilbert, and there's a quote in it that says, I don't know what I think until I write about it, and I think music's like that. It just clears out your mind, really. So. Yeah. Has your student life or studies at UCD helped your craft? Definitely. I'm really grateful that I get the chance to study what I'm doing, which is philosophy and English, like from the kind of existentialist philosophers like Sartre, Beauvoir, or Camus, I'm inspired to live and choose the life that I want to, as well as Nietzsche and his chaotic approach to art, which I think is really inspiring. But um, William Carlos Williams, an English poet I studied recently, and I love his approach to poetry and imagism and focusing on ideas and objects, and I try to take the same approach to my own writing, so yeah, definitely. He's great. Uh, highlight of your achievement or achievement so far? Um, I performed at Indigo Sessions over the summer, um, organised by my good friend Rebecca Locke. I think there's an interview with her <laughs> if it hasn't come out already. And that was fantastic. I think she's doing a great thing around Dublin and I was really pleased to be part of that this summer. So. Uh, any tips for people wanting to release their own music? I don't think I'm the top person to go to for that, but um, just keep writing and keep performing. And I think it's more important to develop yourself as a musician and the releasing. And writer. Yeah. where do you say, see yourself in five years? Five years, no idea, but hopefully still writing, still creating music. Uh, ideally, I'd love to have an album out by then, but uh, yeah, still writing, still, still perform. Thank you. There's a gold mine waiting in the dark of the mountain. It'll stay there until someone figures how to blow it up. But until the day comes, they'll send the miners deep. Emptiness of 
and this is Intimacy Trap. songwriter so I create music and my current project is I'm working on my next single right now uh, tell us a bit about your process do you have any favorite locations to write or work any tips my creative process started about two years ago um, and it's because I usually wrote in my room alone um, and it's changed a bit because now I have a team so I work with my Sorry. producer Connor yeah it's really fun so um, I basically write alone in my room when I'm sad and then I take it to Connor and we go to his house and we basically record together and we make sure like, you know, we see what we like and it's really fun. Uh, who are you, muses or idols, any favorite quote or pieces of work that inspires you? I love Carsey Headrest, they're my favorite oh. band um, and my favorite song like that inspires me the most as well is each Life and Death by Farsi Harris and also Nobody by Mitski and First Love Late Spring. Uh, has your student life or studies at UCD helped your craft? I met my entire band through UCD, so I would recommend. Um, yeah, I really, I really love it here. I love the music society. Um, as soon as I joined, like I met so many like-minded people. Yeah, I'm really there. It's great. Uh, highlight of your or achievements so far? I think playing Wheelands in December was really fun uh, and I'm also playing there tonight. Oh, exciting! So yeah, Wheelands is fun. I don't want to hurt no one Falling in love is just a bit I'm fine
any tip any tips for people wanting to release their own music I'd say work on your own craft alone like as much as you can uh, make sure you love it make sure it's perfect and then when you're ready find a good team and be as picky as you need to be Indigo Sessions started as actually uh, my 21st birthday last year and I had decided to have a gig instead of a party and then ever since then I fell in love with like promoting and like organizing music and like showing good live talent to people in Dublin especially for free that really means a lot to me so yeah I really love it and finally where do you see yourself in five years I don't know I hopefully doing something I love maybe music maybe not but hopefully you know still pursuing that kind of thing